Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to introduce you to the new Building Gen plugin that provides you with the ability to quickly and intuitively generate and customize 3D structures for use in any of your projects. Building Gen utilizes blueprints which are used to arrange modular buildings into custom packages that can be reused and refined with different elements, materials, and construction styles according to your preferences. Under Props, you'll now find an iBuilding category which contains the Building Gen plugin sampler. And here we also have a Building Gen French style content pack which is sold separately. Within, you'll find over 200 different items from walls, pillars, and ground materials to doors, windows, plants, and more. There are also tons of different texture styles which allow for more diverse building design combinations, not to mention 10 building structure templates and an iBuilding config file which we'll explore later. After installing the Building Gen plugin, you'll find options in the plugin menu as well as on the toolbar. You'll also see a Building Gen window up here with some basic settings showing an outline of your floor layout. These will also show up in your scene manager. You can quickly add additional levels within your structure using the duplicate button. And delete them using the delete button. Be aware of which levels you are deleting as they may all be quite different in size and appearance. This particular floor simply acts as a trim between the ground and second floors of this structure. Ok, let's take a look at basic material customization. To select a specific element in your structure, you can double click with the left mouse button or single click with the middle mouse button. If I select this door surrounding wall, I can search by prop material for material specific to that element. Then drag and drop it directly from the content manager to the selected item slot in the customization section of the building gen window. You can also drag and drop directly to the viewport, but be aware that if I do this for a section of the building that has multiple identical elements, it will replace them all simultaneously. To only replace a single element, drag and drop to the selected item slot. I can use the same process to replace all of the similarly grouped elements. You'll notice that the ground floor is grouped separately from the others, and materials will need to be applied separately as a result. The sampler pack offers 8 different styles of wall texture options, and you can also utilize your own custom made or other purchased content as well. Substance materials can be used in this workflow as they can be procedurally adjusted according to the requirements of the structure. You can see the results when we test a couple out on the ground floor wall group here. The advantage of using substance materials in this workflow is that there are more detailed material parameters available for adjustment. You can even adjust different areas of the same material like the individual tiles here. From there, you can use the eyedropper and paint bucket tools to apply the same adjustment to other elements. We can then manually adjust the door color to match the color scheme a bit better. Here we have a couple of sections that I want to add windows to. This is easily done using the copy paste functionality, using the section with windows as our copy source. Be aware when doing this that corner and regular side sections are unique in many cases, so be sure to apply the correct elements to their proper place. Within the element category, you'll also find a wide range of decorations. If I drag this street lamp to the child element slot, it will be attached to the wall element. We can freely adjust the position of our lamp after application. If we select the child element and choose search material, you'll find that we have a choice between day and night options. If we want to add street lamps to the other sections of the building, aside from using the copy paste method, we can also hold control and use the middle mouse button to multi-select all of the sections we want to apply to, and then drag the lamp into our child element slot to bring them in simultaneously. The French style content pack is available for separate purchase and contains a large collection of unique elements. Here I'm simply adding in this potted plant decoration to my windowsill along with some separate ivy by dragging them into the child element slot. 
I can then copy to other sections using the same process shown earlier. Now at the rear of the building, I'm adding in a pipe element. Another quick and easy way to assemble multiple copies of this is to ensure that Snap to Model is active in your preferences, and then hold Control and click and drag an element to duplicate it. It will automatically snap to the end, allowing us to quickly assemble an extended pipe up the side of the building. I can then add a curved section of the pipe as a child element and use the W and E hotkeys to toggle the transform and rotation gizmos to get it properly attached to the main pipe. Model snapping is particularly useful when assembling structures like this, but be aware that snapping will be according to the local pivot point of your element, which in this case is at the mouth of each pipe section, so they fit together perfectly. You can also integrate your own custom content into your structure by clicking and dragging the prop into the child element slot like I'm doing with this stone balcony here. As the materials for these sections are all linked, so the child elements will also be. As you can see, when I adjust the color values of one of them, they will all change simultaneously. I can add some final flair to the building by incorporating some custom awnings as well as an air conditioning unit on the roof. Once we're finished, we can experiment with different lighting scenarios using the presets at the top of the building gen window. When switched to night, you'll see the material values for the lamps and windows change to become illuminated automatically, which saves time from needing to do it manually. If I'm satisfied with my construction, then I can save the building in the custom tab under the I building category. If you've finalized your design and want to optimize it to use less resources in your project, you can click on Optimize Building, which will merge everything into a single prop and bake the materials. You will no longer be able to edit it using Building Gen after this, and it will be saved as a custom prop. That's it for this Getting Started tutorial, guys. Be sure to check out the other tutorials in this series to expand your knowledge of this super useful plugin. I'll see you in the next video.